There's a whole world out there waiting to hear what you have to say. They may not like it, but they'll hear it. AM 1050 KCAA. Best bumper music in all of talk radio is found here. The Many Moods of Vince Daniel. And one of the best books that I've uh, started to read is uh, right here in my hands. I'm holding it up uh, for the camera. The Fruits of Graft, Great Depressions Then and Now. And it's by the author uh, that's my guest in studio today, Wayne Jett, uh, who joins me. And we've also got uh, Jeff uh, from Huntington Beach, who's on the line and has a question. Jeff, you're on The Many Moods. Hi, Vinny. Hey, hey, Wayne. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, listen, I don't know if I have a question here or a comment or maybe just some food for thought, if you will. Uh, but I, I, I've been listening to your interview here, and and uh, I'm, I'm grasping the concept of what the government's trying to do here. Uh, is there any correlation to 9-11 in this, uh, Wayne? Is, do you see a 9-11 event that's kind of taking the same shape here as what we're going through, you know, we went through then, we're going through now? You follow? Um, I understand your point. Uh, frankly, I can't provide any evidence of that, uh, though. I, I, I can't make a net connection because I just don't uh, know any evidence that would tie the two together. Uh, okay. Uh, other than... Um, well, I think there, maybe, there maybe a, where, where he's coming from. I don't, I'm sure this would be your point here, Jeff, but is it, um, is it that if we had another 9-11, obviously everything would just collapse to somebody right. through something like that again. I think that's what he's... Might be well, I mean, what, well, okay. Like a lot of sitting back, listening to the listening to the interview here, and 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 what you've been reading from the book, and basically what the book's about. I can say that this book is a also a conspiracy theory. There's no. I don't think so. Okay, so well, I, I, that's but he's providing some historical evidence here. So, so I, that, okay, so that's what I'm saying. In, in 30, 40, 50, 60 years from now, we're we finally going to hear the truth about 9/11, and I, that it was all set. I mean, is that how it's going to work? Okay, Jeff, thanks for the call. Let's go to Riverside, talk to Rudy. Rudy, you're on the many moods. Yeah, we need to keep away from conspiracy theories. But my question is, um, reinstating the Glass-Steagall Act, what will that do for our economy today, and what are the chances of getting it reinstated? Uh, well, our chances uh, uh, up through 2010 uh, of getting it reinstated were nil because the Dodd-Frank uh, bill uh, labored mightily. And uh, and did away with it, uh, or at least uh, went right by it without uh, putting it back. Supposedly, there's some action uh, toward uh, restoring that, but it's just simply a margin of safety in terms of the amount of uh, risk that is uh, heaped upon the nation uh, by these uh, big banks. Uh, frankly, uh, my view is uh, that uh, any bank that is too big to fail is too big to uh, operate in this country. Uh, they mm -hmm. ought to be broken up and... Uh, 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 eliminated, prohibited from doing business here immediately. Uh, certainly, the very last thing that should be done is uh, require taxpayers uh, to pay for their risk-taking uh, out of taxpayers' funds. Uh, that was a mistake in, uh, in uh, 2008. It never should have been done. The people who were 90 percent plus uh, against that bailout bill of TARP uh, were absolutely right, and yet it was exactly the dominant elite who rolled it through Congress because they dominate the leadership of both houses. Uh, and they certainly had their man at Treasury uh, when uh, Henry Paulson uh, was forced upon George Bush, uh, uh, largely by the Democratic Senate, that would not uh, allow anything to go through until he gave them a Wall Street Secretary of the Treasury. Great yeah. question there, Rudy. Thank you so much for calling in this morning. Yeah, thank um, you. Who would you consider, Wayne, to be the dominant elite, not only back in the Great Depression, but today? Uh, the dominant elite uh, from the beginning have used a, uh, uh, a great cloak of secrecy about them, their identities and their operations. They operate uh, behind the scenes. They do not show their face to the public. Um, even back in the 30s, um, when it was uh, attempted uh, by Stalin uh, to identify uh, the operators that were um, uh, influencing the turns of events uh, uh, in the communist uh, Soviet uh, Union, 
uh, uh, was not able to identify with any certainty who the dominant elite uh, were because they, uh, they don't act uh, directly um, in, the, in the public. I identify uh, those that can be identified uh, in general terms in my book, uh, but I uh, prefer not to do that on the air uh, because I want to make sure that the facts related with regard to them uh, is as uh, factual as possible. Uh, I would like to uh, return just a moment, if I might, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, uh, winding up the point about the so-called whether there is or was not a right a, the a end conspiracy of the, the end of the thirties in the uh, yeah. in the thirties. Uh, in uh, I told you that uh, in 1939, the Democratic Congress would not raise taxes because they had had their head handed to them in the 38 congressional elections. In March of uh, 1939, March 5th, Henry Morgenthau, the Treasury Secretary uh, for uh, Roosevelt and uh, uh, obviously his close cohort, uh, met with the Franklin Roosevelt and told him point blank, uh, Mr. President, uh, we can have an economic boom within a month if you will agree to cut taxes. Uh, I've got my undersecretary, uh, uh, he's drawn up a full plan uh, for doing so. I want to come over to your uh, office at the White House and present that to us, to you. And, um, uh, and so they had a meeting with Roosevelt at the White House on March 7th, at which uh, uh, he and his undersecretary, Morgenthau and his undersecretary, presented that plan. Uh, Roosevelt looked at it, uh, uh, expressed his skepticism that uh, it would make it, uh, him appear. Uh, in fact, he said, you've got a lot of nerve uh, presenting this kind of... Uh, uh, Mellon uh, plan of taxation. Mellon was the one who cut taxes uh, under uh, Coolidge all through the 20s. Mellon plan of taxation, th my, my political enemies would think they've got me on the run and I'm beaten. So he, uh, he started deriding him that way. And uh, then he, uh, uh, he said to him uh, uh, when, uh, about the economic recovery uh, within a, uh, uh, a month, um, in fact, Morgenthau had brought a little sign for Roosevelt's desk that said, does it help the recovery? He said the people visiting his office loved it when they saw it. And Roosevelt said to him, that is a very silly sign. This is not about recovery. This is a matter of politics. And as Morgenthau and his undersecretary, uh, John Haynes, wow. uh, walked out of the Oval Office, uh, Roosevelt uh, uh, shouted to them, for God's sake, don't be so innocent. Wow. People's hero, huh? Back then. Wow. What a, what a story. And it's all right there detailed in your book. I had a, s a couple other questions I wanted to get to I didn't get to. And we didn't get to present day and how a lot of things relate to where we are now. But th that's all the more reason, Wayne Jett, to have you back in studio for another hour like this. I wish we could. <laughs> um, I wish we could go two hours today, but I know you've got a busy schedule. Um, but we'll, let's do this very, very, very soon in the next few weeks. You know, try to get, plan an hour in here and, and have you come back. There's so much stuff here. Great book. It's called The Fruits of Graft, Great Depressions, Then and Now by Wayne Jett. Pick this up. You could order it from my website. There's a link there at VinceDaniels.com. Wayne Jett. Thank you so much for your time here today. Thank you for having me, Vince. You betcha. We'll, when I'm, we will do this again soon. We're going to have a very special hour where I'm going to tell you a very personal story coming back right after newsman Nick Anthony in your top of the hour headlines, traffic, and weather. 59 passed on the many moods. La, la, la.